Welcome everyone to the newest episode of Coed Guesting. Last episode we had the one and only Anime Man and if you haven't seen that video go ahead and check it out. And this video we have an insanely special guest. A few months ago we were introduced with PT which was the playable teaser to Silent Hills. A game everyone was insanely excited for and after the cancellation nobody really knew what to do. But there was just one hope. Allison Road came into the works, and it was a game that was said to be a spiritual successor to Silent Hills. And today we have on co-ed guesting the one and only Chris Kessler. Welcome to the show, Chris. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Can you tell us who you are, where you come from, possibly your social security number? If you... uh, no, but um, <laughs> let's start with the basics. Um, it isn't very exciting, actually, I guess. I come from Germany, a super small town, uh, middle of nowhere. And um, to study, I moved to the UK. You know, the thing is, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do when I was a, when I was a kid. Um, I had literally no idea. So I did all kinds of weird-ass jobs. Right. And, um, but then when I turned 20-ish, I sort of realized, okay, I want to go into film. Visual effects would be awesome. But there's just not really anything that I could, I mean, there wasn't anything that I could really afford back in Germany. So instead, I went to the UK. Um, on like a big ass student loan and I studied uh, digital effects for like a year and uh, from there I went on to London and um, from there all over the planet. I mean it was really amazing because <laughs> one thing it just fell into place you know right. one thing happened and another thing happened. Oh man. So actually my background is film not games. Um, that's in fact the first game that, we're making. That's actually film. pretty interesting so I'm guessing you used your film uh, techniques to create the uh, script to Alice in Road. And exactly. The, okay, that's actually really interesting. All right, so let's move on to the question sections of the interview. Basically, how this works is I'm gonna ask Chris a bunch of boring, measly questions. He'll answer them in the order that I give them, and this is the most boring part of the interview, but it's to get a basic knowledge of Chris and the game that he's working on. Are you ready, Chris? Let's do it. All right. So, Allison Road. What the hell is going through your mind when you decided to like create this game? You know, since when are you a gamer, if I may ask you? What was that? Since when are you a gamer, if I may ask you? Well, like, you how long have I been gamer? Yeah, since I was a little boy, man. I've been, I've been and playing like, video games. Into horror games, I suppose. Uh, horror games started when Slender came out, and I got oh. really into horror games. Okay, I see. That's an interesting one, yeah, yeah. You know, I've actually been playing games since I was like a little kid, and um, I loved horror for like forever. I mean, I saw Alien when I was like eight years old. And um, but the thing is, like back in the days, if you remember, like Silent Hill one, two, yes, uh, these sort of games, or Resident Evil one, horror was very different to what it is nowadays. You know, yeah. So the thing is, the last game I bought, I mean, I don't want to say anymore, but like <laughs> the Evil Within. <laughs> <I> <laughs> I was really excited, man. I was like, holy shit, this is going to be fucking awesome. But then it like really sucked. I mean, I'm sorry. But uh, it just wasn't the kind of game I wanted to play. It was just like too much action and the story was like way too out there for me. I, I just really missed the good old days. So I was like, okay, I let's try make a game, you know, a game that I want to play, you know. I know exactly what you mean. I played with the evil within myself and um, I got to the point where I was like, this game is too damn long and pointless to continue playing this game. I know, man. Tell me about it. Yeah, it was just terrible. So, I like, what, what, what was it? Did, were you just, like, were you sitting in a couch one day and you suddenly thought, how creepy would it be if I was in this house and suddenly all the lights were to go off and stuff like that? How did, how did that work out? Oh, dude, actually, it worked out, I mean... The thing is, like, people, they compare us a lot to PT, and, I mean, okay, now there's the graphics, of course. Yes. Um, however, the thing is, I don't really understand how you could possibly avoid this, because games go towards photorealism, so eventually everything will look like this, right. you know, if you have the resources, I guess. But um, what, uh, what did happen is that last year when I turned 30, I played PT just after my birthday, and I was like, 
holy fuck, this is so awesome, man. Right. <laughs> I mean, it was, uh, it's just like super scary. It looked amazing on PlayStation 4, you know, like this was the first thing that I actually thought, okay, this is next gen graphics, you know. And um, I had a lot of ideas for games actually for a long time. And I got like my little black book where I put like all these little notes in, you know, for any sort of idea that pops into my head. And um, the thing is that you have to be, I mean, from my film experience, I knew what sort of crew you need to realize projects, right? And I was like, it's cool that you have ideas, but you can't do open world game, anything like this, impossible, right? But then after PT, after I played it, I was like, this is fucking awesome, man. And this is like just in like a corridor and it's like so effective, right? So I don't even need the big open environment. It's just about making storytelling smart, you know? Yes, I know exactly what you mean. That's, uh, that's what we're looking for in games. And just it's too bad games don't have it anymore. I guess that's why everyone's so excited for your game because it it, ha it shows these elements that it has that everyone wants in a horror game, but no other game company has said, "Hey, this would be a fantastic idea." It's just. I think it's because if you think about Alice, but if you look, for instance, at the gameplay trailer, right? Like, if, if you think about it from a company point of view, it's actually just. You're in a house and you have to build up the tension like really slowly, you know, because horror sort of works in like a tension and release cycle, right? Absolutely. So you have to build it up really slowly. But as a big company, how do you make advertising for something like this? Because people want something really flashy, something big and better. And they want pretty and, colors, basically. Yeah, everything yep. has to be big, you know, in your face, like Call of Duty. So I'm not surprised that for... I think actually that's one of the advantages of being an indie because you have such limited resources that you have to be very creative about how you use them. You yes, know? I know exactly what you mean. All right, Chris. Well, tell us what horror games did you play growing up? What horror games did I play? So the Silent Hill series, of course. Of course. Um, Resident Evil, of course. Um, Dead Space. Man, I loved the first Dead Space. <laughs> Dead Space was one hell of a game. Dude, the first one, remember this giant boss fight at the end? I was like, what this is this so Oh, epic. man. I know exactly what you're talking about. That game was actually the only game to ever make me throw my controller in fear. Batteries yeah, came out, ended up dying. I was like, oh, crap. I know, it was so badass. Man, so all these games that you played, like Resident Evil, uh, Silent Hills, Dead Space, are we going to see things like that in uh, Allison Road? Um, <clears throat> not really. I mean, the, there's a few factors, like for example, the third person approach is very different to the first person approach, right? right. Uh, the fixed camera angles that he had in Resident Evil is again an entirely different thing. Um, I mean, you have to design the game different from the get-go, oh. right? And um, also, I really don't want to rip off any of the ideas, so, I mean, I have to say, like, Alice Monroe doesn't, even though the press is telling us like that, but Alice Monroe doesn't really have anything to do with uh, Silent Hills. I mean, who, oh. even, who even knows what Silent Hills was about, right? Nobody. All we had was PT. That was basically it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay, and Lily, was this like, was it an ex-girlfriend, or where, where did the inspiration for Lily come from? Dude, the thing is, I got this question, like, so much, but... Unfortunately, I can't answer it because Lily is super important to the story, and if I answered the question, I would spoil the story. Ah, uh, not not even something that could. You, you gotta give us something to this question. You gotta <laughs> like. Did you did you have a dream about it? Did you? No. The thing is that first I wrote the story before I wrote the characters. I think normally you actually have to write the characters first, and then you build the narrative around them. Yes. But I just wrote the big picture first and then the characters and Lily just fit in there perfectly oh, okay. so sadly if I were to give you more background on her I would give you the story you know no I don't want we, we don't want that of course but all right so exactly how did you react once you found out that people looked at your game as uh, like a spiritual successor to Hideo Kojima's Silent Hills <laughs> I mean how would you react I mean I would lose my mind, honestly. I would, I would feel honored and scared to make this game any longer because it's. I mean, it's it's crazy. It's really insane. Um, it's it's just really bizarre. I mean, it's almost surreal if you think about it because these franchises they don't pop up out of nowhere, right? I mean, these companies have to put like millions of dollars into it, and then they have to put millions on top to do the marketing, and then if the game sells, then they might decide to do a franchise. And this is like super established. I mean, I played Silent Hills when I was like a teenager, right? Okay. Uh, 
now we're doing this game and people, they give us the chance to be the successor. I mean, it's incredible. It's really amazing. Wow. Do you feel you're going to actually live up to Silent Hills? I mean, I do think so. You know, we have some really, really cool ideas for this game. And the only thing is, it's not going to be, I mean, Alice in Wonderland is going to be very intimate, you know? Right. It's almost going to be like the first Star Wars movies because George Lucas didn't have any money, right? So he had to really think what he does with the budget. It's going to be like that. Uh. I mean, it's going, be, it's going to be very scary, very intimate, um, smallish. I mean, it's not going to have like 20 hours of gameplay, right? But um, I think it's going to be very memorable. Okay. So YouTuber Mr. Ray Honda asked this question for me to ask you. Do you feel that the game will be as grotesque as Silent Hills? Are we going to see, you know, a lot of blood? Are we going to see severed heads, maybe? Um, no, not much. Not, this, not much grotesque? I have to say, um, so personally, I'm not that much a fan of... Uh, this goes back to the evil within, actually. Like, just how the game starts with this guy chopping this other dude up, and you see it, like, upside down hanging from the ceiling. Yes. It, it doesn't really work for me because it just tries super hard to shove it to like make you scared or uncomfortable, you know? Okay. We, we, we're gonna go more in the direction of, let's say... Have you seen The Cell, the movie The Cell? No, but you can explain it, I'm sure. Yeah, dude, it's like from 98 or something. Okay. It's, it's really amazing. Um, basically, they, they developed this technology that you can go into the mind of another person. So, there's like Jennifer Lopez. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I know. But she's like a psychologist and she goes into the mind of a serial killer to solve a crime. And um, it's like in his mind, there's like all these surreal sort of landscapes and things happening. And that's sort of, that's more our thing, you know. It's more about surrealism and, and weird stuff rather than grotesque and, and gory, you know. Ah, okay. That makes a lot of sense. All right, so Allison Road was greenlit within... 48 hours. How excited were you <laughs> okay. about that? That's crazy. Any any words to the fans? Any words? Thank you, fans. I mean, <laughs> unbelievable. People just shared like crazy the all the Silent Hill. The amazing thing is like the, the all the Silent Hill fans and the Silent Hill Facebook pages and the networks are like totally backing us. That's really incredible. I mean, they were just sharing like crazy, and then we had like, I mean, because on um, Steam. When you have an item there, you can see like st statistics, right? There's like graphs, how you compare to right. the rest. And we are like way up there. I mean, with the top games ever. I mean, wow. really incredible. Well, I'm, a lot of people are excited for this game. And we're excited that you're excited. <laughs> uh, Mikey actually asked this question. Um, do you ever feel uneasy while you're playtesting the game? Like maybe fear of like the sound a sound glitch happening where um Lily's footsteps will appear when they're not supposed to I did I did actually um, in fact that happened and it was super freaky I was playing in the Oculus with my headphones on and I was testing Lily's footsteps exactly that happened actually um, I was trying to time her footsteps to something and she was supposed to stop and the footstep sound it stopped but at the same time it was still sort of going on and I was like man what the hell is going on where does that come from and I kept going I kept going kept getting closer and I just heard it in my I thought I heard it in my headphone I was like what the fuck this is so freaky <laughs> but then it was actually my wife was like totally trolling me she was like sneaking up on me while I was like <laughs> earth, you know? and she was like Ooh. and I'm like wow fucking hell that that, <laughs> that is wife of the year award right there that's yeah. amazing <laughs> All right, now this will be the last question. Hopefully we can actually get an answer to this question for the interview section. Is there an idea for a release date that you can possibly say as a co-ed gaming exclusive, please? <laughs> I can only say we're like aiming for end of Q3 2016, unfortunately. That's all I can say right now. Wow, because... that's great. Go on. <laughs> because, I mean, the thing is, we need to crew up a little bit, you know? Because okay. I used to do... I used to do all the environments, like I did the entire floor um, that you see in the gameplay, but um, now I'm so busy with all this other stuff, I definitely need like a hand on this, you know, so um, it's it's tentative. So guys, you heard it here, Q3 of 2016, look out for it, hopefully, hopefully it will be out by that day, if not, I imagine somewhere around that time frame, right? Around this, yeah, hopefully. Beautiful. 
All right, guys, this is the next part of the interview. This part is called This or That. Basically, I'm going to ask Chris Klessler a couple of this or that questions, and he'll answer based on what he feels is the best answer. Yeah. Are you ready for this? No. All right, sweet. So the first question is this or that, Chris? Uh, this. All right. Would you rather be stuck in a room with Lily or a Slender Man? Dude, is that even a question? That's Lily? a beauty. Lily, all right. <laughs> Dude, have you seen her? <laughs> she's pretty. She's pretty um, hot. I don't. I... <laughs> What's wrong with you, man? Oh, I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> R. L. Stein or Stephen King? Stephen King. Okay. Room full of video games or room full of cats? Games. <laughs> I don't understand why nobody chooses the cats. Cats are awesome. What the hell do you do with all these cats? Throw a string and watch them go. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> all right, it gets a little bit weirder. Two hundred corpses or two hundred severed heads? Corpses. All right. Yeah, any reason why? Well, what do you do with heads? With corpses, I mean, you might be able to do some. Oh. All right, let's not get into that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a deep, meaningful conversation with Hideo Kojima or Guillermo del Toro? Del Toro. Del Toro? I imagine you like his movies and stuff like I that. Love. Everyone yeah, does. All right, guys, this is a new segment in called Guessing. This one's called About the Creator. Hopefully, you didn't answer any of these questions, and we're going to ask questions about you specifically. Chris Kessler, are you ready for this one? Let's do it. All right. So, what are your hobbies? Hobbies, um, games, CG, movies, and guitar. Okay. Um, what was the last time you saw Broad Daylight? Because I imagine you're <laughs> always busy. Actually, today I had to go out because I had a business meeting in town. So. Oh, okay. Today is the answer to that question. <laughs> are you suffering from carpal tunnel syndrome? Because I imagine you going crazy with the typing and using actually mouse I'm words. working on a sorry man, actually I'm working on a Cintiq uh, graphics tablet so it's really comfortable oh so. okay so the carpal tunnel isn't a thing for you no. all right how long have you been creating games games um, well we started last year in end of August and that's it so wait is this gonna be your first game that you ever create oh. whoa that that goes to the next question. How do you feel that the first game you're creating is this big? That's incredible. It's really a privilege. It's amazing. Did you honestly think this would happen? No, no. no. See, the thing is, <clears throat> I, I wasn't really starting this because I wanted this to happen, you know? I, I started this because I really wanted to do a game. And um, even if nobody had ever given a fuck about it, I would have still finished this game, you know, because then I could take it off my bucket list, you know, that I made it. Right. So um, what happened is just fucking incredible. I mean, it's amazing. I can only imagine. And the last question from About the Creator is, when you sleep, are your dreams as twisted and demented as Alice in Road? <laughs> Dude, you wouldn't believe it, but when I did research for Alice in Road, I had to, I watched like three or four weeks I just read like horror stories, violent stories. I watched horror movies and gory movies and crazy Japanese movies. Okay. I had fucking nightmares <laughs> every night, like serious nightmares. It's horrible. Oh man, I I can only imagine. Like it, it starts to slowly take over your brain as you get more and more into this game. Oh jeez. All right, guys, this is the last segment for Colored Guesting. These are five second questions. Now, for you, Chris Kessler, I'm going to make things a little bit more interesting. Usually, I'll ask people random questions and have them mess up on person, but I'm going to quiz you about your own game. From the gameplay trailers and things that you have released, there are certain things that I pinpointed that hopefully you will be able to answer. This is to basically <laughs> test whether or not you know your own game. You have five seconds to answer every question. Every single time you get one right, you'll hear this sound. Of course, you can't hear it because I haven't edited the video yet. <laughs> and every time you get it wrong, you'll hear this sound. Are you ready? Yes. All right. So let me let me just actually see if I could bring up a timer right quick. 
so that you have five seconds for every question. All right, Chris, are you ready? Let's go. We're going to start this in three, two, one. Uh, actually, no. Now it's going to start in three, <laughs> two. <laughs> that was my mistake. I didn't scroll down. I didn't have the questions ready. One. What game system controller is on the table in the first five seconds of the game? PS3. All right. How many lights are on the back porch? The back porch? Well, dude, we call this a little differently in Europe. But you're out of time. Oh, eight. <laughs> if it's right, I'll give it to you. But <laughs> if it's wrong, no. Um, what weapon do you have the choice of picking up in the kitchen? A cleaver. All right. And how many pieces of jump scare toast pop out of the toaster? Uh, four. What's written on the wall when in the bathroom as you turn around? Sin and death. All right. And the final question: How old is Lily? Eighteen. All right. I, I I of course have to give you that one because we don't know the answer to that. We were just trying to get a little <laughs> bit of information. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Chris Kessler for Allison Road. Check out the game. I'm sure it'll be on Steam since it's been greenlit. In quarter three of 2016. Uh, Chris, do you have anything left to say? No. Before I, mean, we... I mean, I just want to say like thanks for the support. I mean, you can't even imagine how important this to us. So thank you very much. Really appreciate it. All right, Chris. Thanks so much for coming on the show. You've been a pleasure to have. Guys, if you guys enjoyed the show, please hit the like, favor, and subscribe button. Don't forget to check out Allison Road. And as always, guys... Hey, Chris, can you just say game on in your most hyperactive voice ever? Hyperactive? Oh, just, just feel it. Just let it go. Game on. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you guys enjoyed the show, please hit the like, favorite, and subscribe buttons down below. No animals were harmed in the making of this film, and if you think we did well, then you're a shallow prick. Don't forget some of the past videos we did, which can be found in the boxes here and here. And as always, you guys are fucking beautiful. Except for Mikey. Fuck you!